Never been here before to come to worship with us for the very first time. We want to ask whatever you have sat, you can stand. The ushers are next to you. We will welcome you in this service. If you are here for the very first time, just put up your hand and Asha will walk you as where you are to so make you feel welcome in the service. Any visitor today? and minister to you, so if you have a need, you're welcome, come to our office, uh, Betha will connect you with a pastor nearby or pray with you. Monday, tomorrow, we are here for prayers, come, let us pray Wednesday, we are fasting the whole day, let's come at 5.30 to break the fast. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Psalms 92 and verse number 10. Psalms 92 and verse number 10 says, But my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. And this comes from the King James Version. But my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. That unicorn horn shall be filled and that's what you want to do for me. That's David crying to the Lord that he would give him not just an anointing, but he was praying for fresh oil. And my prayer is that every time we come to church, the cry from our heart is, oh God, give me fresh oil. Let there be some freshness. Yesterday's gone, and tomorrow I don't know what is going to happen, but for today, give me some freshness. Quickening of my spirit so that I can know the things that you're doing. The second law in some of these great words that we, we use, thermodynamics, is this. Everything tends towards disorder. Everything. And it has a tendency of going towards some disorder of a kind. Um, and left to itself, anything left to itself or an isolated system. It has a tendency to go towards a state of maximum disorder. So if you leave something by itself, whether it is a very good car, Mercedes Benz, I hear there is 500 S. I don't know what's the difference. But if you left it for one year, having pumped the air into the, into, the, into the tires, after one year, if you come back, it will start misbehaving in the tires. Right? It will go towards decaying. Anything, whether so good, you love it, if you leave it for so long isolated, 
it goes towards a state of maximum disorder. Left on their own, even people or things, isolated from outside influence, things tend to get worse, they don't tend to get better. They just tend to get worse. And that's why sometimes we have some intervention. I love God that I'm a Kenyan at a time like now. But I envy the guys that are coming after us. Uh, you know, it's not dreaming, it's thinking when there will be a pipeline from Turkana all the way to through Isiolo uh, to Lamu. I imagine the highway that they are going to build on that direction will be nothing like the Vika Superhighway. Uh, the interchanges, the, you know. So I imagine the, there must be something. But you see, I go back to when my father was around when the road to Banana, the road to, 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 to Kwamaiko, the road to Gatanga, the road to Kandara, they looked the same. You found yourself in Gatanga and you wondered, Kwani ni merudi Because you would meander through the coffee and so, and the road was the same size. Mukikutana, yule anakifua, anakataria kwa barabara, yule anakifua ya kutosha, anakanyanga inje kidogo. That was the kind of roads that I, I met. We had only 12 million people by the time I got uh, to high school. 12. And today we have... What if, if you don't believe me, can I tell you something? When I started the church here, you would see our church from the road. So, you would see the church. Oh, but today... Unless you go with that that ka point, kare muna yekaga muki tafuta direction. Muna itaga nini? Iyo pin, you you get lost here. So there is a lot of of growth and things will will. For them, I think the roads will be better. But then the question I ask: How about their morals? Are their morals getting better? Or all, all the gadgets that we're working on are targeting our morals, targeting. Our morals. In Hebrews chapter 1, verse 10 and 11, it says, And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. They shall perish. The heavens and the earth shall perish. But thou remainest, and thou, they all shall wax old as that garment. Yani itakua kama vile nguo. In a chaka, and how clothes grow old. That is the King James Version. And this is why evolution for those that have lecturers and professors that want to cause you to feel bad that you believe in a, a creation, that things are evolving and they're getting better. That's why sometimes you have a problem with them because things are not getting better. Indeed, things are getting worse. Things are not getting better. Now, I was listening to BBC yesterday. Not yesterday, actually today this morning. It's around five on my way to church. And they were talking about some country, very interesting, some country in Europe. And they were saying that country used to produce cotton. But produce cotton. But today, the country cannot produce cotton because of something happened, which is uh, whatever they are calling climate change and so on. That instead of cotton, they have a lot of salt. Where there was a lake, there is, there is land and forest. Where did their lake go? Where did their land go? Something happened. So when we, we think of the earth becoming better, I also think it is, it is thinking or lying to ourselves in that case. The theory of evolution says that the things have progressively gotten better, gotten smarter, more advanced with any outside influence. And this tends to get worse when left on their own, no matter what. I want you to underline that. No matter what it is, they will tend to get worse if they are left on their own. I want to speak about five things and then I will 
The fifth one is where I'm going to do a little emphasis on and then I'll be done. Number one, everything in our lives left unattended will eventually fall apart and disintegrate. Anything left unattended, anything in our lives. For example, your body will fall apart if you don't take care for a while. If you don't take care of your body, you decide you're not going to use the vax lean. You know the vax lean? If you don't use the soap to wash yourself with, or you don't shower, all what you need, can I tell you, is to refuse to brush your teeth for one month. Don't remove the meat that sticks there. Don't remove the maize that sticks there. Don't remove the bogus that stick there. You just leave them one month. And you will know what I'm telling you. Some of your teeth will decay. You'll have problems with your gum. Because of the sugars, the cakes that we eat, the sugar we put in our tea, there are some bacteria, and those natural bacteria which live in our mouth, when you add those things, they form some plaque in us, and those plaques interact with what is deposited in our teeth, and the, the harufu that comes from that mouth. If you are married, you wonder why is your wife always on one side facing that direction or oh, when you are talking to her it's like she she wants to talk to you on this side because there's some rottenness so when we don't take care of our, our mouth our mouth something happens which is which is not good so the second thing that i also think when we talk about everything in our lives left unattended will eventually fall apart is your home, your house. I want you to go and look at one room that you don't want to use and lock it. Just lock it. Don't use it. Just lock it. Give it two months, then walk in. First of all, there will be dust. If you observe very well, there will be some moth that will start eating the cement. If you stay five months, you will come and you discover there are some things that in that house, there will be holes. I don't know where those two animals come from to dig holes in a cement. I'm telling you this because I had a house. Oh, I still have. I tried to sell it. Buy us. Buy us. They wanted to buy it like a plot, the size of a plot in Kawasukari. I decided... Why should I sell it? But every time I go there, it has tear and wear. Actually, it is wearing out. Eh? Bwana. Hey, hey. Unakuta, kuna tumududu tumeanza kukula kabro. He? Nanyasi. Haya. Anyway, I have to do something before I miss what used to be my beautiful house. So buildings, we build them on top of the ground, of course. And termites exploit the small cracks in the buildings to enter into that structure. And once these termites pathways have been established, termites, they work 24 hours a day. And they work all the days. So 24 hours. So if you come after three years, you will discover your house is not there. So take care of your house. Look at your neighbor, tell them, neighbor, take care of your house. You know, I said in the first service, when we were expecting our firstborn, I went home and uh, for various reasons, tell your neighbor for various reasons, the pocket did not have enough for various reasons, you know? Have you ever been in a place where the pocket don't have enough? Okay, the pocket did not have enough. So I went home and uh, we were expecting. So my mom, being kind, said, go with this one. There was one of my nieces. Go with this one. She had refused to continue with the schools. You know, 
but I thought she did very well. My sister, who is the mother to her, had not gone beyond class five. So she had gone to class six, so she was a graduate. <laughs> so we come to, with her to Banana Hill. We had a house there. And uh, we leave her in the house. And the whole day, she did nothing. So when we came and uh, we asked her, have you ume panguza? Because you see, when you come into the house, ladies, men might not even notice it, but you notice dust even at the edges of the sofa set. So here, Alice is saying, did you wipe? And the girl smiles at my wife and says, it is not dirty. Of course it was not dirty because she was coming from karate. And you know karate, the floor outside and the floor inside is the same. So this one was not dirty at all. Now, let me not go into details. You know what happened next. The vehicle that was going back to that place had to help her to get to that place. Because it is not dirty. I almost imagine an to patia chakula na ile sahani tulitumia jana. Kwa sawa sio safi, sio chafu. Take care of your home. Take care of How about those people that drive cars? We take care of cars. Somebody says a car is your second wife and I normally say no no no. no. He comes that car comes and want to take to switch and take over from your first wife. Why am I saying this? Because those people that have cars, amen, the house can have no food. But the car left the house in the morning <laughs> to go to work. And some of the ladies that are Pentecostal, power packed, prayerful warriors, they normally pray. And their prayer is, itoboke <laughs> mugu. Because the mugu is more, a little bit expensive than fuel. Do you know fuel? You put kagiri, you know, but mugu can cost you 10. Ikifika hapa mse anasema hata pesa hakuna, sasa atakuwa kiedo na matatu. But as long as nishiave turu, magana meri, you will always have, and they might lack some food. May God help us. Those that a vehicle has come and taken over from your family. Taking care of our cars. Because if you don't, corrosion will come and eat it. Uh, it will have some holes. <laughs> oh, this reminds me of a car I bought for, for Alice. It was an, an auction car. It was Nissan Sunny. It was very cheap because it was an auction in Mombasa. You know, he's a magari watu later on a cosa pesa. So we, we, we got it. But uh, corrosion had done its own work on it. Within a very short while, ungiatoa mkeka, ungiaona lami. Take care. There are many things that we should take care. But I want to jump so many, you can keep on adding to the things that you need to take care. Because if you don't take, they will deteriorate. Kama uchuguliki, itakuja iki, iki thofika. Ndoa. Marriage. Let me finish with marriage. You see, marriage, it's, um, it's something that is a mystery. Actually, the Bible calls it a mystery. It's like between church and Christ is a mystery, you know. And no, no wonder there are two words that are very critical in a marriage. There is submission and love. And if they are used well, then we can develop a good marriage. Because it is a mystery. It's a, it's a mystery. But some people want to get married today and succeed tomorrow. Let me tell you, it doesn't work like that. After you get married, there is time for 
yourselves getting together. And getting together is understanding how you sleep, how you snow, how you eat, and so on. There are so many things that, and sometimes you can get to a place, you feel, no, 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 I never married this man. The one I married is not this man, but it is the man you married, only thing that you did not know, you did not know them. No wonder I agree with what Bishop Mark says. He normally says this when people are getting married. This girl that you are getting married to is not the wife of your dream. No. This is the one you fell in love with. But the wife of your dream, you have not fallen in love with yet. But this one, ni matope. Tengeneza yeye, kutoka na yule yuko uko, ili, very soon you can say, there goes the wife of my dream. At first I thought, Bishop Mark, are you serious? And I've discovered it is. If you want a wife with good makai, you work on it. <laughs> good nose, you work on it. Yeah. The responsibility to make her the kind of a wife you want, it is yours. No wonder people have a problem because when you cannot do it, when you cannot maintain it, you think it is the wrong one. Yet, it is the right one. That brother, uyo jama, uyo jama na furaga, na piga paka, na kuku, na kira kitu. Uyo, die yeye. The only thing is, it is the dream that you had of that man. You can make him. Now, kiona kimeundwa. Ama ukiona kimele. Usicheze nacho. Kuna mtu amefanya kazi. <laughs> oh, I love that family. They look, they love each other. <laughs> Kimeundwa. Kuna jamaa amefanya kazi. Marriage. You know, can I ask the people that are married to stand if you are, you are here and you are married? You are married. All of you are married. When is the last time you went to a boretum? And, no, I'm just asking, and your spouse rested on your chest. When was that? Now sit down. Let me tell you what has happened. The kind of romance that you have now is different. Because some of you have been married 30, 40, hey, in endaga ikibadilika. The chips that you used to buy her, ati unamnululia chips. Sasa hale is kweli naeza mnululia chips. No, I'm serious, I'm just asking. Ati chips na kuku, ama chips. Can you? Ati mnatoka kule, mbote ni kakululia fish and chips, pale ngara. But when we were courting, man, I tell you, I took her down, vichochoro, vichochoro. I bought her mandizi ya matumbo. <laughs> so what happens is simply this. Because marriage keeps on changing as you keep on moving. Your romance keeps on changing. The romance does not change, but the way you do it changes. Ah? Tulipo wana tunakulia kwa Jiko, jiko ni. Tena tunakura na sahani mo. Moja. Siku ambio ni toke kwa kitchen. Hapana. Nilijiona sasa zingi. Kwa saa kuna msiana wakazi. Tutambia na ya nini. Do you know if you want to be a wise man, what you are given eat? Complain to your wife. Ah. Sina kusaidia, wea ni mze. Usejefanya mjua jimuko huko na musiana wakazi kwa, kwa kitchen na store. Hapana. Iyo wachana na ayo. Na mama akisema anataa kumfuta, unamambia unamfuta lini. Akisha mfuta, ndi utamambia na, na ujua kuna makosa. <laughs> but not before. Because if you defend her, 
wewe utarudishwa kwenu take care of your marriage think of the way you because if you don't take care of your marriage no wonder you have surprises in your home one of you gets you surprised ati hata unaishi hapa i haven't seen you for a long time na mko kwa nyumba moja tu why you're not taking care of each other i don't want to stay there long enough because i am so romantic by romantic i take some stories from masharia because masharia now has better songs than mine you are the best you are shining you are shining you are shining like the star so i do it to her <laughs> masharia is my grandson has more stories now than me so i have to copy them I don't know how she takes it but those are the jokes that you have. Or another one that we have in our house. Surprise! Because of those boys when they come that's what they greet us. They greet us with, we know they have entered. We know they have entered. But <laughs> surprise! So romantic isn't it? So take care of your marriage. <laughs> ah my goodness. Sini romantic leo sana. Number 2. <laughs> Number 2. <laughs> the most important things we must guard against against their deterioration is our walk with God. Our walk with God. Our walk with God. It's been a while since we have allowed the outside influence of the Holy Ghost to work in our lives and things in our hearts are tending towards maximum disorder. We think things will get better on their own, but they can't. Things don't get better on their own. We have to work to get them better. I feel so strongly in my heart that there are some people who are still thriving on yesterday's manna. They are still thriving on yesterday's Holy Ghost. They are still thriving with the joy that is still with the hope that is still they are still enjoying themselves but i have some good news for you and this is from saint paul who says in philippians 2:12 wherefore my beloved as you have always obeyed not as in my presence only but now much more in my absence work out your own salvation with fear and trembling blessed be the name of the lord you see, when people say once you are saved, you are forever saved, they simply mean be ready. But I say no, once saved, work on your salvation. Build on it in the name of the Lord. Because salvation is a journey. It's a journey we are making. It's a journey we are making. First Corinthians 9.27 says, But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Into subjection. Lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. I make sure that there is some putting this body under subjection. I have to put this body under subjection so that the spirit within me can thrive and grow in the Lord. 1 Corinthians 15, 31, Paul says, for this cause, Paul makes another statement. He says, I die daily. Because of that, I die daily. I protest by a rejoicing which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. Because of that, I die daily. Every day when I wake up, I want to die daily. I don't want ever to wake up in the morning and I feel like I don't want to pray. I want always to pray. I don't want to wake up in the morning and I feel like I don't want to repent. I want to repent. Every day I want to ask God to forgive me. Every time I wake up in the morning, I don't want to say I've arrived where? Badu, the journey is still there. There is not a day that goes that I don't look at that and tell God, because you have given me another day, I'll become a candidate of being blessed and a candidate to bless others. Every day that comes, I tell myself now I'm a candidate to bless others. Number three. The psalmist states a very powerful truth in our passage this morning, and that is the need for freshness. 
freshness, something fresh. And you know, for me, I believe the couple of weeks that I have not spoken here, but people have come and spoken to us, it's like they are charging us and pushing us to some freshness. It's like they want us to do something. Now, unfortunately, some of us rise up at that time, then Monday comes, we go down again. But the thing is, every day, we rise up, we keep on running and walking in that direction. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So the psalmist is telling us, and this is David speaking, that we need oil for today. Not yesterday's oil, we need oil for today. A few of the psalms that David writes, Psalm 61, 8, 8. So will I sing praise unto thy name forever, that I may daily perform my vows. You know, vows, something that we need to keep on thinking about it. You know, you cannot tell me you forgot the vows. You know, there are some people who say, me, unikumbushe tena, ire pledge nilifanya. You know, what you are trying to tell me, you are not serious. Because when you have vowed and you know what vows do, then you'll be thinking of how you can fulfill your vows. You only forget, you want to forget, you want... On Friday it was cold. How many people know Friday was cold in the morning? Now Friday I woke up, but I had a promise. I had promised someone we'll go swimming that early. We'll be in the pool at seven. So I woke up and my prayer was, si anipigie si mwaniambie kuna bariti. Ha kunipigia. So I drove to where we were meeting. Fortunately, in that pool, they heat it. Uh, so you can see, oh, you are cold, but the pool is heated. So I met the man. Actually, he's the instructor. And I met a mweka ile mitungi ya kuosha. So I thought, sasa kwa sababu kuna mitungi, sinisawa tu, kanambia wacha, ingia kwa match. Anyway. <laughs> You see, sometimes we have to perform our vows. We have to, our promises. We have to keep them. And it was for my own good, but I wanted anything that could help me not to do it. And I'm try, trying to tell you, because I'm just like you. Sisini bin Adamutu, we are looking for an excuse why I cannot come to pray and I look for rain. But lo and behold, when it is raining, I want to push my way to get to my employer's place. Why? Because I want to get something out there immediately. But for the things of the kingdom, because some of them take generations for them to, to be worked out, we kind of look for excuses. Ata minalia, unaizima na unaomba. Siiwe iyo ala maikuwa ya kweli. Then it is you who said it. And you require a query, Kabisa. Perform my vow. Psalm 68, verse 19. Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with the benefits, even the God of our salvation. You see, every day when I'm faithful to God, the Bible tells me He loadeth me with the benefits benefits of good health, benefits of provision, benefits of His care, benefits of His protection. He loaded them to me, but it has to be daily. How many people want to be loaded benefits daily? How many? We all want them. Then we have to be committed daily then because he's the one who, my goodness, he loaded. You know loading, loading siku tupa. Kujaza, niku. Psalm 72, 15, and he shall leave and to him shall be given of the gold of Sheba. Prayer also shall be made for him continually and daily shall be he be praised. Psalms 86.3, be merciful unto me, O Lord, for I cry unto thee daily, daily. There is a daily, there is something that I'm going to do daily. I'm not going for the manner of yesterday. I want to go for that which is mine today. I don't want to go for tomorrow. I want to go for what is mine today. Jesus said in the Lord's Prayer, Matthew 6.11, Give us this day our daily bread. This day our daily bread. This day. He also goes on to tell us in Luke 9, 23. And he said to them, Oh, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up my cross daily. We don't become Christians once. We carry the cross daily. 
You carry the cross daily everywhere you go. Carry the cross. I, I was listening to a testimony last night that was so amazed by this elder, uh, who, this man who was giving you a story of an elder. And this elder uh, was making this comment, drinking somewhere with others. And then he says something like this. You know, pastor does not know that I do this. Oh, if he saw me, because he trusts me, I'm one of the elders. He might even faint. Now, you are looking for the pastor to come and see you? Seriously? Seriously? Or like those people among us who say, Professor Elizabeth Ayuko. You know that story? Yes. Professor Elizabeth Ayuko. Iri ufanya nini? Ukunywe Coca-Cola na soda. Now, must you? It's for your own good. It's for your own good. The apostle understood the need for daily dedication. No wonder he tells us, Paul tells us in Acts 2, 46 to 47, and they continually daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. Praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. This is not Paul who was saying this. This is St. Luke. And daily in the temple, 542, and in the house, they cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. So eating is daily. Just like you eat your meat, food, daily, serving the Lord, we need to do it daily. Even our worship, we need to have a fresh, freshness in our worship. Sing unto him a new song. Play skillfully with a loud noise. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And the choir, when you sing a new song, uh, please display it on the screen. Some of us have, they love it, but. So if it is new, let us see it also. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I had said the five, but actually they are four. Re seriously, they are not five, they are four. So when I finish with the fourth one, they are done. So every morning when you wake and I wake up, we need fresh mercy from the Lord. Lamentation 3, 22 and 23. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. Because of his compassion, fail not. They are new every morning, great is fa his faithfulness. Number four, the danger we face when we fail to renew daily is losing Jesus. The danger we face when we fail to renew daily is actually losing Jesus. Luke 2, 41 to 47 says this if I would read it very quickly. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days, as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother knew not of it, but they, supposing him to have been in their company, went a day's journey. And they sought him among their king's folk and acquaintances. And when they found him not, they turned back to Jerusalem seeking him. And it came to pass after three days, three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that had him were astonished at his understanding and answers. For three days, like, look for him. And I want to tell you, they looked for him in the wrong places. When they entered into the temple, finally they found him. Because Jesus has always been here. A few questions we want to ask ourselves. Because now here, this is the most important part of our service, of my sharing, actually of my sermon. Number one, where did his parents lose him? Where? And where can you lose him? They lost him in Jerusalem. They lost him in the city of God. They lost him in church. You can get lost here. You can walk in and get lost here. People see you, but you are lost. People see you as if you are a Christian, you sing like them, but you are lost. People, you walk in, you dress like them, you talk like them, you lift up your hands, but you are lost. You are just lost. They lost him where? In the church. They lost him where? In the city of God. It is in the church sometimes that we lose him. 
We know so much. We scream. When a someone comes and touches my heart, I scream, I yell, I stand, I bring an offering. But I'm lost. From there, I'm lost. I'm supposed to walk daily. Not just Sunday morning. I walk daily. It is possible to stay in church and lose the presence of God. Because the presence of the Lord should go with you wherever you are. They lost him. I want to ask another question. When did they lose him? And when can you lose him? Now it's critical for you to know this. They lost him in a custom and a feast. Custom and feast. They lost Jesus while they were still fulfilling their customs. We lose Jesus when we are fulfilling our customs, paying our tithe, giving our offering, singing hymns. And yet we can lose him. Because one part you're telling yourself, I'm okay. Why? Because I'm doing this and doing the other. It is not the doing. It is having Jesus every hour. It is possible to fulfill our customs, our standards, our rules, our regulations, and still lose Jesus. So you should know that you can lose him in the throng of these people and just come and do all the services, but you go home so sad. You know, you were supposed to live here fresh, but you go home again, you're so sad. It's like, it's like these people who go to Cataloni. Or Heaven's Gate. Or Ukombozi Retreat and Conference Center. Or whatever prayer mountain. And they pray. And they pray. And they feel the Lord has come down. But when they get home, they are abusive. They are fighting their wives and children and everybody. They are, you know, then you wonder. Actually, there is one man. He comes from a mountain and goes and just sleeps with the house girl. And the house girl becomes pregnant. From a mountain? No, you lost him. You lost him. That is just religion. But we want to be found within the presence of the Lord so that wherever I am, whether people are there or not, I want to be a Christian. And let me tell you this for free. There are people who know you come to this church. They are watching you. Actually, they are watching you. And I was so amazed when I landed somewhere and somebody, we were queuing for food, and they tell me, Mimi na abudu kanisayo unaendaga. And then I'm asking, my, asking them, did I behave myself well? I mean, it is important. Did I behave myself well? Because there are people who, are, they know you, but you don't know them. Oh, behave yourself. You can lose the Lord here. Watch uko. Hapa. Hapa tu. Why did they lose Jesus and why? Why do you lose him? They supposed that he was with them. Yani, he is with us. God for us, all of us. Mungu ni wetu soote. And we can lose him because he's not becoming your pastor, no. Pastor, no God. You know the corruption we are talking about? Goes to pastor, no. Hati, <laughs> oh, he is rikari nimbaya sana. Inawizi mwingi sana. But then we ask ourselves, how many of our brothers, how many of our sisters, are there in those situations. Kwa sababu kwani hongo unafikia ni nini? Hongo si ni mtu tu amekwambia faili yako haionekani. Alafu tena yeye yako naanza. Faili yako haionekani? Alafu anakwambia lakini kuna jamaa mmoja hakuna faili kwa hii pahali ambaye hajui pahali iko. Huyo tukimpatia kitu kidogo. Sasa unauliza ni kitu kidogo gani? Uyo sasa anaanza kukuhesabia. Kumi ni za mkubwa wake, tano ni za mdogo wake, mbili ni zangu. <laughs> yani unahesabiwa. Hongo ni gani? Alafu unatoka upande unasema the Lord did a miracle. <laughs> he did a miracle. I have a sister in this church. That sister has money that has not been paid by Kenya government. When they are paying people who are providing air, Timutu amepata 60 million. Na my sister ataki pesa nyingi, ni kidogo. Lakini ukienda kuzichukua unahesabiwa, zinaonekana hata zile wanakupa ni ndogo. Utawapatia zote, uende nyumbani bure. Kwa sababu usha jaza makaratazi ulikataa. You know, wanakuambia sasa jaza za mkubwa, jaza za mdogo, 
jaza za nini sasa ka, ile, ile karamu ilikuwa ya 10 shillings inakuja 10 eh, inakuja 10000 karamu hiyo ya biki hata we mwenye anyway wacha nisiingilie pale you know they suppose he was with them they didn't bother to check they just assumed our biggest danger is assumption i am here the lord is speaking hey shadraka are you born again yes are you born again shadraka yes and then finally shadraka the hyena touches the dead the dead body of an animal and says shadraka when touching the dead Shadrach, are you still born again? And Shadrach the Haina says, yes. And then ate a little of the dead meat. And then asked himself, Shadrach, are you still born again? Now if you do that, if you do that, you will sin saying, Ata mungu ananitumiaga miraculously. I'm a powerful working miracle. Tanguwa kwa dhani. Shadrach, kama imekufa usikule. Hiyo diyo Shadrach wewe. So we can lose him. We can sit in the church and lose the Holy Ghost. We can sit in the presence of Jesus himself and lose him because we have assumed. May the Lord help us. Finally, where did they find him? This is the final question that I'm asking. Where can you find him? If you lose him, where can you find him? He is not with the acquaintances. He is not with your friends. He is not with your neighbor. Where can we find Jesus? I think that will be a critical question for us. Where can I find Jesus? They did not find him in the company of friends. They didn't. They did not find him through the experience of fellow saints. They didn't. They found him in the temple. And I pray that if you assume the Lord is with you, you become like the disciples. They are, Jesus is asleep. They are fighting with a storm. Why did Jesus sleep? Because they did not need him. Sometimes we get to a place we don't need him. Amen. Pesa ukonazo. Amen. Gari ukonayo. Amen. Watoto wameenda university. Amen. Shamba uko na mbili. Hii ya upande huu ni ya kuuza, hii ingine ni ya kudevelop. Yaani you are doing very well. We can lose him. At that level we can lose him. You know there are some of us here. They are so sharp. Hapa. Hapa. Kuna watu wengine ni sharp sana. Kuna mmoja aliniambia hivi he has done uh, alisomea sijui wapi na alikuwa akiongoza migomo kwa hiyo shule lakini kwa mtiani noka le, noka noka e. kwanza ni wale wanakuwa mabrudoza nitakuchapa na nikushinde yuko rana what are you talking about yani that proud but you see up here so when we were talking then i asked him what happened he discovered up here is okay, but with this only, he's going nowhere. He needs to wake up Jesus within him to give him peace of mind. That's what we are talking about. That you can have this, but you need Jesus. You can have a lot, but you need Jesus. Doors can open before you, but you need Jesus. We need him every hour. Every hour. Have you lost him? How is your marriage? How are your studies? Where are you? Where are you? Do you need some freshness? Something new in your spirit? Something that you can walk with the coming week? My prayer is that yes, we shall desire the freshness. The freshness that comes from the Lord. I want to ask all of you to stand. I will ask the worship team again to come. Let's confess again two stanzas. I need thee. Friend, you need him. When you come to church here, you need him. Don't assume that he is here because you walked in. He is not in every building like this. It is people who seek him. Those are the people who find him. And he is here. You can leave this place set free with freedom if you allow him to walk with you. I need you. I need you. I need you. Hallelujah. In the voice like thine can be thine. For I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior.
I think we know ourselves. We know ourselves and we, we know the area that we need him. We know the area that we had forgotten him. We left him many years, we left him many months, we left him many hours. Some of us have just left him a couple of hours ago. But we need him. You need him in your academics, you need him in your careers, you need him in your marriage, you need him as a minister, you need him. You need him as a father, you need him as a brother, you need him as a mother, you need him as a sister, you need him. You need the Lord as a grandfather, grandmother, you need him. You need the Lord. You need the Lord to come the storm that is hitting you right now, you need him. You need to wake him so that he can fight the storm before you. You need to wake him so that he can walk with you in fulfilling your vows. You need him. I don't know which area you need him, but you are saying, yes, Bishop, I need him. I need him. If you lift up your hand to the Lord, we'll tell him, Father, see us here. We need you. We need you, Lord. I need you. I need you as a minister. I need you as a father. I need you as a brother somewhere. I need you. I need you as an uncle somewhere. I need you, Lord, in my academics. I need you, Lord, in my health. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord, in this church. I need you, Lord. And Father, I'm praying for everyone who is saying they need you. That, Father, they will find you. Because whoever finds you, finds life in the name of Jesus. That, Father, we can walk with you. And uh, this week can be a blessed week. Because we will need you every hour. There is no hour that we don't need you. We need you when we are asleep. We need you when we wake up. We need you when we are driving. We need you when we are sitting down. We need you, Lord. Cause us to be aware. Not to assume that we are with us. But always to be aware that, God, you are with us. We need you. We need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we give you honor and we give you praise. For we need you and you're going to walk with us. You have called us and you have said you will never leave us nor forsake us. Walk with us, Lord, we are willing. For this we ask in Jesus' name. We say amen. Give the Lord praise in the house, shall we? In the name of the Lord. Amen. We may get seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Dr. Mary Kamina, we spotted you. You can stand and wave the people of God. Bless you. This, this used to be one of our Sunday school teachers. She's a missionary now at Bypass. Bless you.